CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman joins me now for more. Okay, Ricky, so I want to start off with Stormy Daniels. She and her attorney appeared on The View today. They were talking about in 2011, a man had threatened her in a parking garage. I want to play a bite for you about her talking about this. I just wanted to make my presence known and wanted to make sure that I w people knew that I was taking it serious. Um, I know that there was some flack because he didn't show up to court on Friday for his, mm -hmm. um, and I did, wasn't sure if they were going to discuss anything particularly relating to papers in my case, okay. and I just wanted to be prepared and get all the facts. She's talking about exactly why they chose to show up to court when they weren't really required to be there. Is that correct? Yes. Not only were they not required to be there, in no way were they part of this case at all. They have a case in California, not in New York. So is this, what do you make of the fact that this is playing out so publicly in the court of public opinion? Is a strategy here on their part? Well, Michael Avenatti is a master of dealing with the media. We know that. Uh, his only danger, I say, is perhaps he may be getting overexposed. But the reality of what he has in Stormy Daniels is he has, um, in my opinion, it's only one person's opinion. He has someone who really is authentic. She makes no apologies for who she is or what she does. She is very strong about her point of view. And she says that she wants to get the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. That's what he says. And I found it irresistible not to watch an hour of The View today, <laughs> which I do not think I have done maybe ever. You know, um, Ricky, I want to also ask you about the sketch that they revealed about that person I was mentioning who she believes threatened her. Do we have that image? I want to show, pop up that image that we have of this. What do you make about the fact that they chose to, to reveal this so publicly on The View? Well, the whole thing is a bit odd. And I know that they were accused on The View itself of making this really part of a publicity stunt. Um, Michael Avenatti says on The View, that the person who did this sketch is a sketch artist who has had very, very solid results for cases that are even older mm. than this one. Um, he believes that if he can get more information about the person who is pictured in this sketch, mm -hmm. they may confirm an ID. And he has even gone to the point, I'm not sure if it's clever by half, of creating an email site mm -hmm. that if you see the sketch and you believe you know who this person is, that you should email this site. And he's offering a $100,000 reward. Mm. And I can't resist giving you the name. It is called idthethug at gmail.com. Now, that is, a, as I say, too cute by half. But nevertheless, what if he's right? I but mean, there's somebody, somebody out there. What if they're really, what if this is really the person or looks like the but person? But what would that mean for the case if they do, if they get some clue or some tip that, that helps them get? to that person. Well, I think that that then goes back to her motivation mm. as to why, number one, she took the money because she was scared for her child mm. um, and her family, and number two, why she then walked back her allegations earlier this year when they were put in front of her as a statement to sign that it wasn't true, that this whole mm -hmm. thing with President Trump wasn't true. So this gives her a basis of saying, look, I acted out of fear, mm -hmm. and now i am really found my courage, and I am not going to be bullied anymore. I'm not going to live in fear anymore. I want to ask you about the fact that there was that third client of Michael Cohen's that was revealed to be Sean Hannity. What do you make of that? Well, I think that certainly Sean Hannity, uh, who went after the FBI hammer and tong last week uh, at the time of the FBI's search and seizure pursuant to a search warrant of Michael Cohen's office, that he had a duty as a journalist to say on Fox News that he had a relationship with Michael Cohen, both personal and professional. Now, he says, look, I really wasn't a client. I mean, I did ask him some questions. I did expect that they would be confidential, but I didn't pay him any money. I didn't retain him. The reality is if you have a conversation with a lawyer and you think that that conversation will remain confidential because you have asked for legal advice and the lawyer has given it to you, then it falls under the attorney-client privilege, mm. even if you don't think that you have a professional relationship. The other side of that is, was he really calling Michael Cohen in his capacity as a fixer and not as a lawyer? Mm. How do you think that could be relevant, though, to this case? It feels like Sean Hannity is kind of out there, right, on another spectrum. But do you think that's really relevant to what they're looking into? No, I don't think it is relevant. I think it's interesting, and I think that it becomes fascinating to those of us 
who work in the media mm -hmm. and those people who are observing. Mm -hmm. But the reality of the situation is the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney's Office is investigating Michael Cohen's activities mm -hmm. in the area we know of bank fraud, perhaps election fraud, and perhaps some other events. There, we believe from the publicity that they have been looking for documents also concerning the Stormy Daniels case, also concerning the Playboy Centerfold, Playboy Playmate uh, Karen McDougall's case. But probably Sean Hannity has absolutely zero to do with any of that. Also fascinating, the judge who's hearing this case, Kimba Wood, what can you tell us about it? Well, I think Kimba Wood is really one of the great judges in the United States. Why? Um, her reputation is someone who is firm but fair. She is said by all of the lawyer friends I have in New York when I've called them to say, what do you think, what do you think, that she knows the rules of evidence, she knows the rules of procedure, that she runs a tight ship of a courtroom, and that she will make sure that these proceedings are 100% above board. So I think that is exactly what you want in a federal judge. She has decades of experience. This is someone who knows how to be in charge, and with these players, you need someone in charge. Mm, it's gonna be fascinating, Ricky. Thank you for joining us, Ricky Kleeman. Thank you, Rena.